This video presentation is a demonstration of Syndea 2.0 from Intercax. Syndea is a software framework for model-based systems engineering, connecting SysML models with other engineering tools and repositories. In this video, I will demonstrate Syndea as a plugin for MagicDraw SysML with connections to PTC Windchill, Siemens Team Center, and MySQL. A second video is available showing the same capabilities for IBM Rational Rhapsody. Additional videos show some of the new interfaces with Syndea 2.0 for CAD tools, NX, and Creo, as well as Simulink. We'll move quickly to the demonstration, but we have a few introductory slides first. Since its beginning, Intercax has focused on model-based systems engineering and helping organizations adopt best practices. For us, the central concept of MBSE is that the system can be described as a single unified model rather than as a series of independent and static documents. The nodes of this network represent structural elements, requirements, and behaviors, and the links between them represent composition, flows, dependencies, and mathematical constraints. The advantage of a single network is that it can be a single source of truth from which the system's engineering documents, which we still need, can be created. When one element of the system changes, we can use the links to trace and propagate the impact of those changes. When the model has been revised, we can generate a complete new set of documents with a few clicks of the mouse. SysML is our means for creating such a system model, but it is only part of the story. Each of the nodes of this network are linked to other models and other tools. For example, structural elements might be linked to CAD models. Behavior elements might be linked to simulation models, or spreadsheets or documents or graphics. In other words, the total system model is the SysML model, which acts as a high-level roadmap of the system and as a clearinghouse for system-level data plus all of these other models. Now, there are many challenges in achieving this type of confederation of models. Some are technical. How do we connect the different tools? Are they distributed over a network with access restrictions and firewalls? A second set of challenges are more conceptual. The concepts in the system domain or in the CAD domain or in the analysis domain are not the same and we have to make decisions about how to map concepts from one area into another. The third problem area is that each of these models is constantly changing as the system develops, as are the connections between them, so we have to be able to manage this change. We can look at the total system model as being a series of snapshots over time. As different variants of the system are created and evaluated, we have different branches in this timeline. Now, Syndea is intended to address all of these challenges, but here in this video, we are going to pay particular attention to the problems of configuration and version management, and the way in which SysML can be combined with PLM, Product Lifecycle Management Systems. When we talk about connecting two different tools, we always have to do that in the context of what we are trying to achieve by that connection. We've identified certain basic functionalities that SysML must be able to perform. The first is simply to be able to create a persistent connection between elements in the SysML model and in outside PLM systems and other repositories. If the models already exist in both tools, we need to connect them. On the other hand, if we have a model in one tool, like the PLM system, and we want to create the same model in another tool, such as the SysML modeling environment, we need to be able to generate that second model and then maintain a persistent connection between those elements. Once the connections are created, there are several things we might want to do with them. One is to be able to check for differences that arise over time between the two models. We may want to update those models in either direction. Finally, if we have an executable element in an external repository, like a piece of C++ code or a MATLAB function, and we want to use it as part of a larger analysis or simulation, that's execute. We'll explore that last functionality further in other videos. That's enough of the introductory slides. 
let's move to the demonstration of Sudeya as a plugin for Magic Draw. We're going to do this in the context of a specific scenario. We'll take the role of a system engineer who is required to integrate a system, in this case an unmanned aerial system, using information from multiple outside repositories. The first step is to create a bare-bones SysML structure in the Magic Draw tool, which we see here. In this case, it's simply a top-level block marked CUAV, configurable unmanned aerial vehicle, and which has a number of currently empty blocks laying out the system architecture. Our first task is to populate this using the external databases. We start by launching the Sindea dashboard from the Magic Draw tool. By right-clicking the structure package in the containment browser, scrolling down to Sindea, and choosing Dashboard. The Sindea dashboard has multiple tabs along the top, Repository Manager, Connection Manager, Connection Browser, Connection Summary, Comparison Result, and Settings. We'll go through a number of these in the course of the demonstration, but let's start with the Repository Manager. We already have a set of links between this Sindea license and multiple outside repositories. If we click on Repository at the top, we can see that we have already eight targets connected. The first is our local hard drive. The next two are MySQL databases. There are three different Team Center repositories and two Windchill. In order to set up access to these, we needed user credentials. Sedea uses the security protections already in the repositories to restrict access. I have to go to the repository administrator and say that I need a URL, a username, a password, and access privileges. Sedea can't give you access to that the PLM won't permit, but once that access has been granted, we can store those permissions and use them in creating the total system model. Of course, we can add and delete permissions in the repository manager as needed. Let's start populating the model. We'll go to the second tab, Connection Manager. At this point, we have our choice of different repositories. I'm going to a vendor's windchill repository to which I have been granted partial access. It contains the structure of the UAV aircraft platform that we may be buying. When we choose that, we see immediately that there are many different products. Rather than search for the part I need, I'm going to use the search capability and look inside the UAS final product for the keyword platform. A part called Aircraft Platform shows up. It already exists in eight different configurations. If we drill down on revision A.7, we can see it includes multiple parts like body, engine, and so forth. Body is further decomposed into cowling, fuselage, and skids. A.7 represents a multi-level configuration managed bill of materials that I am going to drag into the structure package in my SysML model on the left side. I am going to confirm that I want to generate a SysML block structure from Windchill. A new window gives me the option of bringing over any attributes associated with the Windchill parts schema. These can be brought over into the SysML blocks as value properties. I'll select the phase attribute to be brought over, confirm the model transform, and we'll see multiple changes scrolling at the bottom of the dashboard. What we have now created is a complete structure of the aircraft platform taken from the Windchill PLM system at the vendor site and recreated in the SysML model. If I expand Aircraft Platform, 
you'll see that it now has a part structure itself, including body, electrical system, and so forth. It also has the phase value property. If I go down to the electrical subsystem block that's been created, it too has a part structure. In other words, we have a multi-level part structure that has been brought over in a single action. If I go back to the SysML model and look at the aircraft platform block now in the block definition diagram, it now shows the part structure and an additional new stereotype. We can further drag out the individual parts of the platform and display them as separate blocks. That's the aircraft platform. As the system integrator, I need to go to a different repository to get information about those components going into the UAV payload. I go back to the Connection Manager and go to a different repository. The information I need about the possible components that could be used in the payload is maintained in a MySQL database within my own organization, UAV Components. Under the Instruments schema, I have three tables, Video Camera, Thermal Camera, and Radar. Each table includes not only the name of the part, but also information about mass and cost. Now, in order to create the integrated system, I'm going to need to select a certain number of components from this database. I'll select the V3 video camera and drag that component into the structure package. so that it is created as a specialized block within the SysML model. I'll do the same with Radar R2. If we go back to the SysML model itself, we can drag those new blocks into the block definition diagram as well. With a little quick rearrangement, we will use these to replace the generic sensor block. If we expose the value properties, we will see that the cost and mass have been brought over from the database as default properties. You can see that in the space of a few moments, I have created a SysML compositional model for the structure of our integrated system using existing product information from a variety of different databases and repositories. This is the first part of the demonstration. The next part will focus on what happens when models change, either in SysML or in the repositories. You may recall that the aircraft platform version A7 was dragged from Windchill into Magic Draw, but there was already a later version, A8. One task we want Sandeya to do is to compare the SysML model with the latest version in the PLM repository. Under the Connection Browser tab of the dashboard, we right-click on Aircraft Platform and choose Compare, SysML, and Target. In a few seconds, a difference table is generated that appears under the Comparison Result tab. The red rows indicate differences. In this case, a SysML element based on version A7, where there is a later version A.8 in Windchill. The difference is that A.8 has a tail assembly part. Back in the Connection Browser, we can right-click the connection again and choose sync target to SysML, which will update the SysML model to version A.8. And the aircraft platform in the SysML model now has the tail assembly. Alternatively, if we have right privileges to the vendor windchill system, we could have chosen sync SysML to target which would have created version A.9 in the PLM repository. Or at least we could use the difference information from Sendea 
to initiate an engineering change request for the vendor. The same capabilities exist for the MySQL database connections. If we go directly to the database through the MySQL workbench interface, we can change the values in the video cameras table. Let's assume a vendor has reported the reduction of mass of V3 from 13 to 12 kilograms. We make that change in the database, but the SysML model still contains the old value. Until we right-click the payload connection in Syndea and select Sync Target to SysML. Now the video camera block in the SysML model reflects the updated default value for mass. This has been the second part of the demonstration, showing that we can sync changes across connections as the system model evolves. Rather than build out the rest of the UAV structure, let's jump ahead to a few final features. Besides blocks, we can exercise these same capabilities with behaviors or requirements. Some organizations manage their requirements in a PLM system. In this model, we've brought in a requirements specification from Team Center, just like we previously brought in a part structure. Then we've used the Magic Draw model to create SysML satisfy relationships, linking structure and requirements. The final stage I want to show is to create a new PLM model of the integrated system that we've just created in our own local PLM system. We'll go to a different Team Center repository, one where I have write privileges, and where I have created an empty folder, Demo 1. We will take the top level CUAV system block that we created in SysML, drag that over to the demo folder, and generate a Team Center model of the system. Ultimately, it will contain a multi-level part structure, the requirements linked to those parts, and the relationships between them. The SysML satisfy relationships transformed to trace links in the Team Center model. This entire process took about one minute. This new PLM model becomes an important part of the next stage of engineering, and we can proceed to populate it with CAD files, documents, analyses, and other artifacts. But the SysML model's role has not ended either. The SysML and PLM models remain linked, and we can move forward in parallel through the rest of the engineering process. This is the end of the demonstration portion of this presentation. Other videos will describe Syndea's interfaces to CAD and simulation tools. For those who would like to try out Syndea 2.0, it is now available for short-term evaluation. To do that, go to the Intercax website, www.intercax.com slash Syndea, follow the instructions, and contact us for an evaluation license. The Syndea product comes with installation, instructions, and user guide, it also comes with a detailed set of hands-on tutorials to assist you in learning how to use the system capabilities. If you have any questions, please contact us at syndea at intercax.com. Thank you for your attention, and keep alert for some exciting announcements about Syndea 3.0.